Through stories and storytelling, indigenous societies transmit essential knowledge critical to survival and provide a cultural framework for promoting happy, healthy communities. In this way, stories hold a lot of power. Think about it. Stories can elicit strong emotions from humans. They can make us cry and laugh, feel anger, relief, empathy, and love. Human beings enjoy telling stories as much as they enjoy listening to them. Wherever and whenever people meet and gather, you can bet there are stories being told. Outsiders tend to see these stories as legends, fiction, folklore, myths, or fairy tales. For indigenous people, these stories function in essential and thoughtful ways. They work to instruct and educate on how to behave properly. They can also act as guides for how to live and engage with the world. Each nation has a creation story and its own distinct oral tradition. There are four general components of storytelling for indigenous people. First. Stories connect the past to the present and to future generations. There are many versions of the Wasaki Jack creation story, but the meaning remains the same as it is told from great-grandmothers to their great-grandchildren. Stories are gifts to be shared and handed down generation to generation. As a Nehewak Esquel, or Creek woman, can be reassured that while she may not have met her great-great-grandmother, the Wasaki Jack story transcends time and connects her to her ancestors. This means that a story I hear from my grandmother is the same one that she heard from her grandmother and so on and so on. These stories allow us to communicate with future generations in the same way our ancestors communicate with us. See how powerful stories can be? Secondly, while the sacred stories may not have changed much over time, the personal everyday stories do change. They integrate new information and new knowledge. They may evolve with changing surroundings, food source supply and movement, landscape reconfiguration, and new encounters with foreign populations. It is important to know that even though indigenous stories may be thousands of years old, some of the stories change to bring the past forward to the present. They change and evolve based on the needs of the population. The next thing to remember about stories is that while stories may sometimes be entertaining, there are also messages instructing people how to live and behave. Indigenous storytelling operates as a moral guide and a socializing mechanism. Stories teach the next generation how to behave and reinforce roles and responsibilities. We find many examples of this in the story of Wasaki Jack. Muskrat's heroic action of diving for Earth demonstrates a lesson of perseverance and courage while Wasaki Jack's laziness in keeping a peaceful community shows the consequences of being irresponsible. Finally, storytelling is a way to transmit the history of the land and cultural knowledge to the next generation. Many creation stories include specific geographical boundaries, such as rivers, lakes, and mountains, to define the territorial lines. For example, in the previous narrative, Nehewak described how Wasaki Jack made the land come to be. In some Wasaki Jack creation stories, features of the landscape to describe the traditional territories of the Nehewak are included. The natural surroundings of the land become the history book. We said that stories have power and they embody complex worldviews associated with a particular indigenous culture. For instance, Nehewak or Cree storytellers will only tell you the Wasaki Jack stories in the wintertime. Their worldview and belief systems are illustrated by this fact. Nehewak storytellers believe that because so many creatures and spirits hibernate and sleep in the winter, it is safer to tell certain stories. Invoking the stricter's name, Wasaki Jack, in the summer is just asking for trouble. <laughs>